Hey there, my brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As always, I feel privileged and happy to be part of these sessions, and uh, all glory goes to God, who is the author and the finisher of everything that happens in our life. I am going through certain situations, you go through certain situations in our lives where we have lots of question marks around our head that leads to perplexion, confusion, distression, depression, frustration and disappointment. Well, these are the only things that I knew from Oxford Dictionary and <laughs> I know the meaning of every single word that I pronounced just now and these are not just the uh, definitions right these are definitions of life what we go through the bad elements the negative elements of life and every one of these parameters are not easy to overcome i'm very honest right what we do here is a very practical teaching and bible is a very practical book bible is a very extraordinary book it's a supernatural book wonderful promises of god handwritten book of God the only book he wrote was this book and people have time to read every other book in the world no time for Bible right how many books did God write just one book and you don't have time and you're very proud of making that statement I'm busy brother God can take off your busyness in one moment one moment so why did I make that statement is because Bible is a very extraordinary book, full of supernatural promises, supernatural events about expressing the greatness of God, the miracles of God, the powers of God, yeah, possibility during the times of impossibility, huh? anything and everything. God is omniscient, God is omnipresent, God is omnipotent. Is there anything harder for me to do? All these things, you know, trust in me and you will see the glory of God. Yeah, I am your refuge and fortress and my right hand will hold you closely. Trust in me and you will see wonders and miracles. All these verses, Malachi 7.15, Agai 2.19, all these verses, like Isaiah 41.3, Psalms 27, all these things, if you take and read, put together, Bible is a very extraordinary book. It's a very, it's a supernatural book. It's not about magical things, huh? When I say supernatural, how? What magic can I expect from God? Miracle is equal to magic to a lot of Christians. But, uh, my Jesus is not a magician. Uh, my God the Father is not a magician. But he is the God of compassion. He is heavenly Father with full of love and compassion. And he is a very, very emotional person. Do you know that? God is very emotional. When you doubt him, the moment you don't trust him fully, the moment you... Don't pay attention to his voice. He cries out to you and me right within us. His name is Holy Spirit. He is your friend and my helper. He is my helper and your friend. Or your helper and my friend too. Right? He cries from within us saying what you are doing is not right. Give up these things that are displeasing your father. Give up these ways that are dishonest before the sight of God. Give up these ways that is insulting the blood covenant and the sacrifice that happened on the cross of Calvary. You don't pay attention. Their heart breaks. Our God is very emotional, you know, very emotional. Many people have projected our God as an angry God. And whose work was that? Devil's work. He's an angry God. He's always angry with people. No, he's disappointed. If God were to be angry, this world will end right now. And he will... Say that, ah, I have spoken something about white throne judgment where I want to show that respect to every creation that I've created and inquire and convincingly throw them into the lake of fire and convincingly invite them into my kingdom. Yeah, if he was an angry God, he would not write such statements. He would say, hey, you don't deserve for white throne judgment. Get lost. The world ends now, right now. You think any, any of us in this world deserve some respect? <laughs> I don't deserve any respect from God. He doesn't have to respect me. I don't deserve. Because my ways are absolutely 
I'm like a crook before God. Even the most honest things, the most righteous things are like filthy rags before God. You understand the meaning of that? Which means it's like a garbage. His righteous deeds is the holy of the holies or uncomparable to the most righteous people that you might have come across in the world. This is what makes you humble. This is what instills the spirit of humility and the lowliness of mind which you see in Jesus. Yes? Which you see in Jesus when he walked with that human blood and flesh because that, that carnality was there in his flesh. He was born like you and me. He was tempted like you and me. But he overcame. John 16, 33. Hebrews 2, 17, 18 says that he was an overcomer. He kept the Satan right under his feet. He kept all the temptations right under his feet through the methods he practiced. And that is nothing but new covenant. New covenant laws and testimonies and commandments are what? Everything that Jesus practices is what has been written. It's not that Jesus tried to practice. It's not that Jesus only taught and preached. But Jesus practiced and he was able to overcome. And he was victorious on the cross. And he died as that lamb without blemish. Therefore, you and I are insisted to practice for your good and my good. For your benefit and my benefit. What do you think? Heaven benefits. Huh? Father in heaven benefits. No. It's for your goodness. It's for your good. Therefore, you and I can become like Jesus. John 14, 12 says that you and I can become like Jesus. Jesus told us. And you can do great things more than what Jesus had done when you practice this. The only man whom I could remember in the Bible that practiced and said that, follow me as I follow Jesus or imitate me as I imitated Jesus was Paul the Apostle. No one else had that. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't judge St. Pe Peter or I, would, I wouldn't judge other saints of God who were existing uh, who, who still exist there are a lot of lots of saints of god i wouldn't judge but the only man who had that guts i i truly admire this man i'm highly inspired are you able to make that statement to your daughter to your son to your wife to your husband follow me as i follow christ ah the day you are able to make that statement you have followed the footprints of paul the puzzle if you have followed the footprints of paul the puzzle Hey, trust me, my brother, sister, you have already followed the footprints of my Lord Jesus. If you have followed the footprints of my Lord Jesus, you have followed the commandments. Not only followed, you have obeyed, obeyed. You have been so obedient to the laws and commandments of what God the Father had written down and left it behind. Which Adam and Eve rejected and therefore their life was in dejection. Yes, they began with rejection and therefore their life ended in dejection. You understood? There is a big connectivity between rejection and dejection. Many of your lives, including mine, certain areas, I'm also in dejection. Yeah, I'm, I'm fighting it very hard. Because why? I practice what Paul practices. Or I practice, I practice what, what, what Paul practiced. Right? I practice what Jesus practiced. And that is nothing but. We are all practitioners of Bible. Huh? Don't make it a religious book. Don't make it a traditional book. I keep telling this. Bible is a very practical book. You and I need to be the practitioners. Therefore, you and I could be the limelight of the world. You and I could be the light to the world, leading the sinners to the life of salvation. And Jesus is not a Christian God or a westernized God, as how many religious fanatics leader or religious fanatic leaders uh, yeah, for all for g gathering up that caste votes and what building up their vote bank they divide people by in the name of religion Jesus is not a western God Jesus is not a foreign God and Jesus died for every one of them including that religious fanatic leader including that person's family Jesus shed his blood but you didn't accept you reject therefore your rejection leads you to dejection you may not be dejected. You may be one of the top entrepreneurs. You may be one of the top rich men in the world. You may be doing very well in your family. Good health. You are 100 plus years. No health problems. However, there is a time where you will see that Jesus is going to come and he's going to judge the world. And that day is going to be the day of dejection. <clears throat> to some people, if you're already living your lives 
in dejection thank god for that the reason is because hey you have an opportunity to rectify your errors and go through the course correction here on earth and thank god for the dejection that you go through thank for that uh, thank god for those failures and errors and mistakes you commit and thank god for the chastisement god punishes us sometimes or most of the times but in my case all the time <laughs> right thank god for that what is easy for god ah you rejected right fine i also reject you and therefore you end up in dejection and your dejection should never ever lead you to the lake of fire all right a warm welcome to this episode number 2 where we are discussing and reviewing very carefully on this important subject that the whole world will witness whether you like it or not whether you want it or not whether you're willing or not the whole world is going to witness the second coming of jesus christ right jesus christ is returning to earth very soon on this title we had been reviewing for many many months you understand and i don't even keep a count of how many sessions i think 160 plus hours we have spoken in episode 2 and and roughly around 110 hours in episode 1 where we spoke about eschatology talking through the seven events that gets kicked off immediately after the second coming of jesus and here in this even in this series where we are reviewing the 14 events that jesus left behind as evidences that no man can reject why because these evidences are connected to scientifical evidence geological evidence historical evidence right and all the geographical evidence all these things we are reviewing together with jesus left behind when all of these 14 events are fulfilled that's a clear indication that the second coming will never be delayed yes i am the trumpet in the mouth of god <laughs> i'm not blowing the i'm not the trumpet i'm not the uh, blowing the trumpets but i am the trumpet in the mouth of god treat me as god's finger and god's mouthpiece it's not me who's making the statement it's the voice of god that you're hearing because he loves you this is your last chance this is my last chance and we will not get eternal life on earth and we got to make every judicious effort every careful effort to come close to christ to come close to god through rectifications of our errors and mistakes all right so we are now on the fifth event and the fifth event is about the rise of negative aggression or rise of aggression rather and fundamentalism right or rise of a power that is associated with aggression and fundamentalism wherever you turn around you will see aggression on earth wherever you wherever you turn around you will see fundamentalism associated to some doctrine some belief somebody said something somebody is running a camp and people run after them they don't check the doctrines of the bible yeah a lot of philosophical teaching and philosophical preaching is also going on on earth you turn around in any direction <clears throat> you will be able to find one thing in common that is some people or all the people belonging to some belief or one belief right um you will see that there is tremendous biases these days right in the name of religion in the name of language in the name of gender in the name of many many things right one sex marriage a lot of people who are who have fallen a prey in the hands of the devil in the name of the homosexuality and uh, lesbian lesbianism and so many other things you know there is also a uh, um a, fa- a factor called as confusion right P- leading people into confusions and i think there was a preacher by name confusion um and uh, yeah that's there is a history you may want to lead uh, sorry you may want to read and understand and likewise in bible you will see nicolaitan teaching a lot of believe the a lot of people believe in christendom also where where sin multiplies uh, grace multiplies therefore you can sin as many as number of times you want to and uh, the grace of jesus is readily available to help you to redeem you to do anything that is needed right and there are a lot of people who are in this kind of biases and that's why you see these are truly the last days where people are heading towards the wrong direction of life 
the wrong direction absolutely and that's why we keep preaching and teaching on these important factors that brings light and visibility right and the light and visibility is much needed why because only that will save you only that will set the right directions and the more you are into this kind of visibility for example the power is gone right i've recently traveled to my hometown and there is power kit and i've been just lighting a couple of candles and oh then i understood the value of a candle light when was the last time you used candles and people living in country of america or european uh, nations and stuff like that you don't you don't witness power cuts come to india you will learn what it is okay so during power cut is when we understand the value of light the value of electricity yeah thomas alva edison the man who invented wow what a wonderful creation what a wonderful invention right and uh, I, I i truly appreciate only at that point of time because that's when i understand the value of light right and then when we light up the candle ah it is better to have a candle than to sit in dark right we still appreciate the candle light but when the power is restored back when the electricity is restored back after all the repair work or whatever reasons right we have so many reasons here in india they have a scheduled power cut <laughs> you need to plan your work according to the scheduled power cut that would be a disaster if it were to be the case in any of the european countries or even us and uh, many many parts of the world yeah because electricity is down everything is down internet is down internet is the key factor for everything to revolve in some of the most developed countries india is still a developing country that's why we are still witnessing all these things right so you appreciate the value of light when you go through darkness but how are you able to appreciate is when because you know the value of light right that's the power of bible that's the reason why we and keep encouraging that you got to read bible you got to pray to god you got to ask him to lead you from the front and therefore you learn to appreciate the value of light why because you will know the areas of your darkness areas where you are weak areas where you are feeble you had been sinful right the area, areas where you know you the areas which separated you from the love of god and you will never get there unless and until you get to the fact unless and until you learn to appreciate the goodness of god giving this bible in our hands this is that candle right it leads you into dark uh, sorry it leads you out of darkness uh, but to people who don't believe they continue to live in darkness and they end up landing in the lake of fire where there will be enough light but you will be burning in that light <laughs> right you won't be able to appreciate what if you sit on the candle no you keep the candle over the table yeah it's light but how about you sitting on top of the candle it's going to be fire and you will feel the heat absolutely right it may sound like a joke but you will know the truth when you witness during the end times and these are i mean after the end times these are the end times end times have already been kicked off and that's what we are proving event over event how jesus predicts things through prophecy and and his prophecies are yes and amen and all his prophecies are the truth right my father is the father of truth jesus said and it's the devil is the father of lies and that's why you see people who open up their mouth and they volley of lies lies you know liars a lot of politicians are liars they make all false promises false propaganda and they stake up the oats and after the oat bank is full and they are back to power and, and they don't even tend to remember what they promised correct father of lies is exactly what bible is saying do not be like the devil refrain from the spirit of lies okay now we are carefully reviewing the fifth event and we are talking through two topics related to this rise of a power that is associated to aggression and fundamentalism 
on aggression we have spoken through positive aggression and negative aggression we are still talking we are still reviewing the negative aggression from the bible we said enough context already i am not going to get into that if you want you please rewind and there are a lot of uh, videos we have done the basic sessions there and we would strongly encourage you to please go through those and be benefited and we are also going to review fundamentalism as constructive fundamentalism and destructive fundamentalism jesus was a man of positive aggression and constructive fundamentalism leading people to light leading people to salvation leading people to confidence right instilling that hope yeah sometimes jesus will have to do miracles heal people sometimes he have to be a healer sometimes prophecy sometimes uh, preaching and teaching sometimes parable sometimes answering the questions he played multiple roles he changed multiple hats all for one reason to lead people to light to lead people to the life of salvation and no other reason was there behind all these these is people use all of these in christendom i'm saying for the benefit of their own self yeah they built a lot of empires looting money from people in the name of healing and prophecies and what not these are truly the last days that's the negative aggression and the destructive fundamentalism which we also would like to preach and teach after a period of time i mean after a few sessions right now we are dealing with negative aggression as a topic because we spoke a lot about positive aggression that's very clear you you analyze the life of jesus um it's all about positive aggression how he led many things from the front and led many people to positivity those that were in negativity those that were bound by demonic possessions jesus freed their bondages right and that itself is like positive aggression he was very aggressive positively to lead people to the right side of the life lead people from the dark side to the side which sheds light yeah redeems them delivers them and frees them from all the bondages liberal liberalizes them liberalization yes liberty perfect liberty bible is promising about perfect liberty that's what you see in jesus now what, the question i have for you and me my brother my sister is like are you like jesus where are you wherever you go you bring the deliverance in the name of jesus you you free people from bondages you shed light on them you set directions yes they have a problem you have a solution for them in the name of jesus from the bible through the bible yes you are a great disciple in christ if not you are into negative aggression you are into destructive fundamentalism where he have not understood the value of a christian life right or value of christianity christianity is not to bring divisions and uh, see our religion how many people we have not like that we are not here to run denominations and congregations no the mark of christianity is to be the light to the world through your behavioral pattern through your love for one another through the faith that you have in christ that you are able to pray over people through your conduct through your speech 1 timothy 4:12 says that that's called as the mark of christianity you want to know more about these colossians 3:12 to 25 ephesians 4 um 17 to 24 mark uh, sorry romans 12 verses 12 to 21 you may want to read all of this you will clearly understand the definition of christianity and more you want to get into the advanced topics of christianity as far as spiritual deeds are concerned you may want to read ephesians chapter 5 galatians chapter 5 1 john chapter 2 complete chapter you sit and read and evaluate i'll tell you what in matter of couple of hours you will discover the real who you are probably you will need you your you yourself will need rescue and your pastors and your uh, the elders in the church will have to conduct so many fasting and prayers to redeem you to deliver you you were thinking all is well with me no sometimes it, it's not the case or most of the times it's not the case because we don't tend to ask that question to ourselves and that's the power of bible when you read bible bible will pierce your heart the word of god will pierce your heart it will divide the carnality from the spiritual deeds and it will help you understand where we are going wrong right hebrews 4:12 take and read okay so we reviewed some aspects and parametrical uh, values of negative aggression negative aggression itself has no value but some people they are practicing this therefore you need to understand the post consequences of this negative aggression 
And one study we did from was uh, Proverbs 26. And in the book of Proverbs, we have reviewed so many uh, paraphrases in the past. Proverbs 6, we reviewed who is that wicked man. Proverbs 10, we reviewed. Proverbs 17, Proverbs 21, and Proverbs 16. Now, I have little to touch upon Proverbs 26 and extend these facts to the new covenant, right? We reviewed many aspects of negative aggression from the old covenant and I have a long way to go. I'm going to spend a lot of time in this negative aggression as a concept. In a previous session, we reviewed from the life of Absalom and how he rebels against his father. And that's the very good example, typical example of negative aggression where you don't understand the value of relationship. Beloved, you have every right to say no, but there is a sense of respect. You need to be polite. You need to be grateful for what your parents did to you, right? What your husband did, what your wife did. Some of the things, not always all, not always all the people are wrong, right? Not always all the people are wicked. Maybe due to circumstances and their position in life, they have gone to the negative side of their life. And But, but for that reason, do not forget some of the good things they have done and be thankful, be grateful. If possible, be at peace with them. If not possible, do not count them as your enemy. Pursue peace with men. Only then you will be holy before God. I'm giving you certain references. Hebrews 12, 14. Romans 12, 18. And uh, uh, what else? Um, yes. Uh, yeah. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. No. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verses uh, 14 and 15. If you read, it clearly tells that do not count anyone as your enemy right my time is flying so i want to summarize what we reviewed from proverbs 26 and perhaps we will see if possible today or we will do it in the next session where we will slowly get into the realm of new covenant and from new covenant i want to show many things uh, to you my beloved brother my sister where we could review and we will also still connect with the old covenant, right? And that's the way to review Bible. So Proverbs 26 verses 24, 25, and 26, we reviewed a few sessions ago. And the summary is like, you know, the, especially the secure, secular, especially the secular sociologists and psychologists have done extensive research and observation on most human behaviors, uh, such as the various forms of anger, and uh, no sense of forgiveness, always revengeful, want to avenge somebody, waiting for a chance to avenge somebody, and um, what is say bitterness, hatred. They did, you know, these are the different forms of anger. Anger is the superset, and these are all subsets to uh, the, the the superlative uh, tense called as anger. Yeah, and they did a lot of research around that. And what is the underlying principle what is the underlying uh, problem behind this anger that leads to so many other problems which the world encounters right and during the world war ii military psychologists first used the term negative aggression in uh, you will not find negative it's called as passive aggression active aggression and passive aggression active aggression is nothing but positive aggression where you lead people even to the extent of sacrificing your life. That's what Jesus did. Even to the ex extent of sacrificing your money, you will empathize someone. Right? Not just sympathize. Empathize. Passive aggression is for your benefit. You will not even think twice to murder someone, uh, drop someone, grab somebody's property or steal someone's uh, belongings or... Yeah, ditch people, mislead them with a flattering lips, with flattering lips and uh, talk all sorts of lies. And this is called as negative aggression, right? Or passive aggression. And uh, the psychologists, and especially the military psychologists, to boost the energy of their soldiers or behavior of their soldiers, they use this term passive aggression, uh, who displayed passive resistance and um, I would say reluctant compliance to orders. That means nobody can misbehave or disobey. Whether you like it or not, you got to go and fight. Else soldier, you're going to be killed according to the law of military. So while passive 
aggression may sound like a person who switches between extremism or extremes or first uh, you know then then uh, yeah, or a, being an extremist and then being a passive person towards aggression but it actually describes one who is aggressive but in a very passive way but in a subtle way you know which is having a lot of hidden parameters yeah politicians you need <laughs> you don't have to learn this art please don't learn anything from the politician because uh, it's politics politics is all about conveying certain things in a subtle way which will have a lot of hidden factors i'll give you a very uh, practical example have you signed any bank documents in the sense for you want you want to approach a banker i hey, give me some loan i want to build my home i give me some loan i want to start a business oh my goodness they will ask you to sign in some 20000 papers and 30000 signatures <laughs> correct or not we all go through it right and have you ever read all the documents what they present right in front of you no you don't i have not because why we are always in the desperation some of at least for me i trusted in god always i sought god in prayer and i went for a loan because i have the capacity to repay the loan whether it's going to lead me to some problems or not only assessing that after assessing that i went for a loan therefore my faith is in god first of all and i have sought god in prayer for many years before i went for a loan i don't encourage any of any of you to go for a loan if possible please avoid taking loans but then when you go for a loan you don't you don't kind of read everything that is written there yeah my wife tried to read once and but she also gave up after a period of time why because it's just too much you need money and if you start to read you will never sign <laughs> why because <laughs> there are a lot of hidden factors which will lead you to passiveness negativity why because in the event of death in the event of your property being demolished in the event of you know any natural disaster striking your property you still have to repay the loan so many clauses if you start reading all of this you will be completely out of your mind and you will be filled with fear and demotivated you will not be able to sign i'm not saying you shouldn't read the documents read it if you can okay but there are a lot of hidden factors and even some of the documents no you have to you have to use a lens or a microscope it will be so tiny the font and some of the hidden truths are available there some of the points which is beneficial for the insurance company or banker is being written down in that small tiny font you understood that's the work of the devil he will hide things or he will make it so small ah this is nothing brother come on you can partake in the uh, lord's table doesn't matter previous night you have gone and lied with a prostitute yeah you can still come why because communion is all about it right you need cleansing touch from the blood through the blood of jesus and uh, you may you might get certain venereal disease because you lied with a prostitute body of jesus stripes of jesus is there to heal you no problem at all please come there are a lot of pastors who make such preachings and teachings <laughs> it's a disgrace it's a it's a crime to insult the blood covenant knowingly it's an unknowingly people don't have access to the bible eh? because of their forefathers tradition they belong to a different religion or they are in tribal areas god really will give them a second chance because he gave a lot of indications sodom and gomorrah rights you know people of tyre and sidon he gave a lot of examples and they will get second chance who don't who did not have access to bible but you and i have access to bible right you reject bible or you misapprehend bible or you are blind you are a blindfold sheep you are that you know christian idiot or a act man of stupidity that you have believed someone else's preaching and teaching and you have made a bad choice in your life then you are making god responsible is it fair no it's not fair at all it's absolutely unfair for what you got into what is what you it, you know it's because of your decision is what is where you got into and how can you make god accountable yeah you if, if you 
I'll tell you what, Bible is not microscopic. Bible is not having those hidden fonts and smaller fonts in a Bible is so clear. You don't need a lens, but you may need a pair of glasses if you have eyesight problem. That's a different story. <laughs> yeah, Bible is not tricky. Bible is not, you know, subjective to certain conditions. Only if you fulfill these conditions, you know, you will be able to understand the meaning of the Bible. No, no it's other way around. You understand the meaning of the Bible. Therefore, you will know the conditions of the Bible. And therefore, you're very clear what are these conditions or which of these conditions will work in your life. Which of these conditions will never work in your life? Blessings and curses, which you can see in Deuteronomy 28. One example I'm giving, right? Likewise, you can, you can correlate with the new covenant. New covenant is a very clear instruction that's been given. And what leads you towards negative aggression is also given there, right? And what misleads you away from the Bible is also something that you can understand through these concepts and doctrines. You have not been aware because the devil projects what is to be given attention as ah, it's nothing. What is not to be given attention? What he talks about fellowship, gathering, prayer meetings and all that. I've gone to certain prayer meetings, fellowship gatherings and all that. And uh, they talk about Jesus 30 minutes and they will be having all this uh, snacks and biscuits and coffee and tea and having fun for the next two and a half hours. And they call it as Christian gathering. <laughs> you see, this is the part of, and they're very aggressive doing that week over week, week over week. This called as negative aggression. Hey, my dear brothers, my sisters, are you listening to me? You do things in God's ways. You do things according to the doctrines of the Bible, the laws and commandments of the Bible, then yes, you are a person who belong to the positive aggression side of the category. Otherwise, you belong to the negative aggression because there are a lot of hidden factors which you have not reviewed carefully and the devil biased you. Yeah, the devil misapprehended, misled you, misguided you through your own pastor, through your own wife, through your own husband. And don't blame your husband, don't blame your wife, don't blame the devil even. Blame yourself. I always have blamed myself. The areas where I'm weak. I am still weak in the areas of faith. Certain times I get into worry. Certain times I get into fear. Certain times I'm, I'm I, I don't disobey God knowingly. Unknowingly I disobey God many times. And certain things I, I'm dull to understand. I'm slow to understand. And I literally won't forgive myself. Why? Because... I'm a mature Christian. I have read Bible so many times. I'm a preacher and teacher. And how, and how I can miss a friend? I will never forgive myself. And I have gone hard at myself many times. Only then you will be able to un unearth or excavate those hidden factors which the devil had ingested in you. It's like, you know, the seeds that fall on the way, the seeds that fall on the you know, parched uh, ground or uh, rocky surface. You you know that parable of the sower, right? And uh, the, 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 the birds of the air will come and take away those seeds. The word of God is really good. And you are also listening with good intention. But what happens is the worries of the world, the troubles of the people. There are a lot of troublemakers, challenges at workplace. You have a very challenging boss. So many things will instill that fear or instigate that worry. And it will take away that goodness. It will take away the good seeds that God was trying to sow in your life. How many of you are with me, beloved? This is what they found. At least today I will set the context and tomorrow uh, when we meet, we, will, we shall review from the new covenant. And so according to these scientists' findings, such as uh, such aggression leads to anger. This, this passive aggression leads to wrath. This passive aggression will make you malicious. Right? It will build hatred. And these all will manifest in striking out other, others in ways that would not normally be considered violent. Any, any war leads to bloodshed and any bloodshed is violence according to Bible. Hmm. Ahimsa is a Sanskrit word and that's been derived from the Bible. Mahatma Gandhiji, the father of Indian nation, he took the path of Ahimsa. Many people fought against the English through their ways, right? So many patriots, Indian patriots, 
they shed their blood they were killed and they killed many people and all that but they could not get independence but this one man who practiced ahimsa from what he learned from the life of jesus from the teachings of the lord jesus <laughs> one independence if i were to say this he will they will say that oh, you mean to say jesus got independence absolutely jesus is your god and my god yeah by saying that you are saying our gods and our goddesses are don't exist that i leave it to you <laughs> you read bible and then you judge who you are i'm not going to judge you god did not make me a judge over people but he himself is going to judge you and you be prepared for it this is what we are trying to alert with all lots of love and compassion you're not here to finger point at anyone and insult their sentiments or their practices now that's not at all my agenda that is not at all any christian's agenda we are here to tell you that there is a god who is waiting for you there is a god who loves you there is a god there is a god who sent his only son to die for you and me and who died shedding his precious blood and he still are waiting for you he needs your attention he needs your love because he loves you right and uh, if you are a man of passive aggression none of these doctrines will enter in, inside your ears <laughs> you will be a religious fanatic you will be a person who will not think twice to murder that's why you see in war there is nothing called as mercy according to the law of the war um, if a person surrenders they will be jailing uh, i mean uh, they, they will jail them or imprisonment and they will torture them to death or whatever after that but then they cannot kill them right except that there is no mercy they are going to shoot the enemy they are going to kill them and technically it's violence right war is war is a criminal act after the war world war 2 got over a lot of people who supported hitler were hung to death they are all of the top officials were hung to death because they disobeyed the law of the war they tortured so many jewish folks jewish women were made to run naked in the middle of the field how were they able to do that because of that negative aggression that was ingested in them through the psychologists military psychologists because that was a very good tool to bias their mind that's why you see so many people conduct i mean or involved in so many murders and they have nothing at all they murder one person they murder 20 people they murder in their lifetime maybe 1000 people and gangsters and a lot of uh, what i say hitmen right uh, they call themselves as professionals you don't have any feeling huh, when someone you're going to shoot someone in the right in the middle of their head and the blood is shed and you see their wives wife uh, not wives wife crying and children crying and yeah and uh, they are not able to overcome the depression you have no feeling hey i'm telling you you are a very good agent for devil devil needs you he loves you and you are that very good instrument for negative aggression for example another, another another example forget about bloodshed are your workplace you ditch someone you spoke ill about someone to your boss therefore that promotion was given to you and you have no feeling sitting in the chair yeah which which someone else deserved and you don't have any feeling each time you get that appraisals appreciations and hikes and uh, bonuses and stuff like that it's someone else's money it's blood money that you have in your hand if you are a christian you will go and confess the truth and resign your job or you will say terminate me i am a bad employee to the company because why i was a man of negative aggression a lot of people today it's a very practical teaching today a lot of people listening to me you have done many of these things in your life and i'm giving only few examples and and for example you were very rude with your sister that you said that no 50 50 share no i want 75% of my father's property because i'm a male you are a feminine and the poor sister agreed why because she loves you more than you love her and you have no realization that you are sitting on her property god will judge you brother and that too she is not doing very well in her life she has a drunkard husband she has mischievous children and as a brother you are supposed to help her but you snatched her property on top of that you think god is going to be quiet because you were negative aggression all that you need is your money and you want to build your empire you look at lot of entrepreneurs you could lot of business people they cheat government they cheat people they sell their product as a very good product right and they use all the nasty techniques like advertisements and this and that and attract people and 
yeah this product when you drink this uh, drink you know it will give you that energy and all that and <laughs> and people believe and they drink and they end up in liver problems and kidney issues and all that and a lot of officials sign that document right without government approving government knows the truth right they do a lot of tests in the lab and all that those guys will go to hell forget them but how about this guy who influenced those politicians and influenced those government officials first of all god will inquire that guy and of course they will not escape either because they were appointed as ambassadors of christ who runs the government for god and his people huh? yeah the government is running on the shoulders of god i see a 96 says that negative aggression brother to mint money to make money to build your empire to gain that power uh to you will go to any extent influencing people to build that negativity in the society to build that negativity in your family and you call this as positivity unfortunately you know the world is calling all of this as a, what is there any company in this world without politics if you don't play politics people will ditch you and all that no you cannot be ditched daniel did not play politics Shatrak Meshach Abednego did not play politics. Joseph did not play politics. Mordecai did not play politics. They were chief administrators, satraps, and there's, you know, the he was a prime minister and the governor. Joseph was the prime minister, and uh, Daniel was the advisor to the king. King Nebuchadnezzar consults him. They didn't play politics. Don't don't make all these nonsense statements. Today I have taken longer time. Give me another five minutes. I will close. you all understand that's why the violent behavior during the wars and the crimes and the rapes they committed never sounded violence because there is no law and order during war yeah and the same principle applies there is no law and order when you have the power jesus was very hard at pharisees why because you are in power therefore you make people to obey the laws and commandments which you preach and teach but you don't obey yourself that's why jesus said do whatever they preach and teach but do not follow them they are bad examples jesus said this it's in your new covenant please open your eyes and read open your bible open your eyes right some people open their eyes and close their bible and read what <laughs> read what the devil is injecting in your mind oh, i can close my eyes and read and meditate you are meditating something in the sleep and you will go and land up in hell open your eyes and open your bible and read it carefully brothers and you will know the power of violence you are a very violent man and that's exactly what we discussed in proverbs 26 and today god is emphasizing me to recap summarize this with lots of practical examples therefore you will know that you are not going to be exempted you will not receive forgiveness christians listening to me fellow believers fellow brothers in christ fellow sisters in christ be very very careful you will not receive forgiveness i will not receive forgiveness if i am going to do this knowingly huh? you have to put your house in order that's what jesus said i do not look at the speck in your brother's eyes look at the log which means what look at the garbage in your life look at the dirt on your in your life look at the nasty and filthy behavior in your mind look at that violence in your heart look at that revengeful attitude in your mind look at the words of your mouth foul languages you talk and you have no regret you are you're going to be truly judged by god and i'm not threatening anyone here i'm telling you the truth we will continue from where we left in our next session god bless you heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity that you have instilled these are the moments lord which we will never get in our lives and we truly appreciate your grace we truly appreciate your mercies they are new every morning lord they are new every morning and we want to thank you lord for this wonderful time that you have bestowed in jesus name we pray thank you very much for your time please subscribe if you have not you will start receiving automatic notifications and share these channel details the videos you watch with whomever you know because it's a very important ministry that you are doing for the lord you are that instrument in the hands of god right i can only preach and teach and you are going to carry it to the next level and someone else will carry it to the next level like that it will spread you know you are going to be the instruments we are partnering to spread the word of god and we are preaching the good news to the mankind and uh, 
another important commandment that you have is or responsibility is to pray for all the ministers of god pray for all the evangelists missionaries my pastors false prophets false teachers pray for them because a lot of innocent people are behind them they have to be saved and even the false prophets and wicked or wicked and not a single wicked person should enter inside the lake of fire is god's desire therefore you have to pray and don't forget to pray for my ministries too yeah and uh, uh likewise you have a prayer request don't run to any man of god yeah not against man of men of god they're nice people but then when are you going to become that man of god right therefore you need to practice certain things and the bible says that in the name of jesus make your request known to god and seek the lord from the secret place he will reward you publicly he will perfect all your concerns yeah with men it is impossible but with god all things are possible he who called you will help you to finish the things the good work that you began in your life right and uh, his ears will never become heavy for your prayers neither his hands will be shortened right and these many verses we have given from the bible philippians 4:6 john 14:14 14, matthew 6:5 and 6 matthew 19:26 matthew 21:22 which i forgot to mention when you pray believe that you have received ask in faith and god the father will never ever reject if a man of god is praying by faith all right you stand for faith god will stand for you have that belief psalms 138 verse 8 isaiah 51 and 2 and uh, yeah i think these verses are good enough you read you will understand the power of prayer god bless you and may god lead you love you thank you very very much for your time take care and i will meet you in the next session